Okay, Pete here for Studio Live today, and in today's iPhone GarageBand quick tip, we're going to be looking at how we can use the effects with effects controls within GarageBand for iPhone to adjust our track. So let's jump in and have a look. So we've got here a very simple little uh, track that's just got uh, three tracks here, and it's just using some Apple Loops. So let's play this one. So, and what we'll do is we'll go in and have a look and we'll use this track to show you how we can use and adjust the effects here in GarageBand for iPhone. The first thing we want to do is slide out our little volume controller and from here we can adjust anything with our volume and we can mute and solo tracks. But what we actually want to do here is go to the start of this uh, flute track. We'll just slide that across and select our flute track. And then the settings icon up here the little cog will jump us into our settings. So you'll see that this replicates the mute, solo, and track volume, and also adds the track panning. So if you want to work, if you want to know how to, to work all those, you can check out what the video that we have on adjusting those settings. But what we're going to be looking at in this video is the additional effects settings that we have here. So you'll notice that we have the ability to add echo, reverb, adjust the treble up and down and adjust the bass up and down and we also have a compressor on here so we've got five different types of effects that we can actually add independently to each track so if you're, you're used to uh, digital audio workstations and doing uh, recording there um, we've got sort of echo and reverb are probably two of the most common effects that you'll add to um, to a track uh, the treble and bass is a very basic EQ so we can only really sort of do a cut or, a, or a, uh, a boost to treble and to bass, and then compressor is a very simplified version of a compressor, which is uh, a dynamic range compression compressor, which will basically pull the volume up of our quieter parts and squash down the volume of our louder parts. So it means if you, particularly if you've got a vocal in a track, then you can adjust that and make sure that your levels are all the same, but compression is also good for bass and for some other instruments for your guitars and, and other things that you might want to add in there. So, to adjust any of these, let's just do these one by one and to show the effect, I'm going to boost them all the way to the top. So let's do echo first and see what that sounds like. So you can hear that, and obviously you wouldn't put that much echo on a track like that, but if you just put a little bit on there and go back and play, then it can add just a nice little sort of echo effect to there. And if we go to the next option here, which is reverb, um, we'll do the same with that. So let's just boost that all the way and go back and play this track. Again, you're not gonna put that much reverb on any track, especially a track like this mind the camera there. Um, we'll do the same here, so let's boost the treble all the way up, if we can find the right button, there we go, and go back. So that brightens up the sound quite a bit, let's boost up the bass, and this isn't going to do much to a flute like this. Probably not the best instrument to show these, but if you're using another instrument, you can obviously uh, adjust those, and then let's just push this compressor all the way to the top. And what you can hear the compressor's done is it's actually kind of squashed the sound together a bit, which means that, oh, go back from there, got the wrong track, <laughs> um, which means that the the lows, the, the low volume have been pushed up and the high volume has been pulled down a little bit to kind of level those out. The one final thing I'm going to show you here on the effects is this master effects option. So the default versions is what was added there with the echo and the reverb but there are a number of different variations on the echo and reverb that we have within GarageBand, so let's show you those now. So when we go to the echo, we see that we've got the default, but we've also got a whole bunch of different ones, and there's about 10 of these, and you can go through and experiment with those, and there's um, sort of the ambient delays and, and some uh, other echoes there, and then you've got the half note and quarter note, so they're really useful because they match to the beat of the song. So if you want an echo that is like a, a quarter note or a half note of the actual song, then they're going to work well for you there. We can do the same if we go back in here, go to Master Effects, and go to Reverb, 
again, we can choose the amount of reverb, so it can either just be like a nice ambient reverb, or we can go into things like a moon dome or a large hall. And let's just put moon dome on there and crank up the reverb just so you can see what that sort of sounds like. And um, we'll just go back here and play. So quite terrible. And it goes on like this, and it won't stop. Um, so obviously that's, uh, geez, that really is going on. Can we turn it down? No, it's just going to keep doing that. Well, <laughs> that gives you an idea of the controls that we have. The, the other thing to remember with those master effects is because they are master effects, you can only adjust them for the whole song. So you can't actually put a different type of reverb or echo on, say, your vocal track, and then have a different type on your guitar track. Unfortunately, you can only choose the one, and then that's applied to all of those. If you do want to add different effects to different tracks, strongly suggest you use some interapp audio effects. And if you're interested in those, check out my video on interapp audio effects. Um, thanks for, for watching today. I hope you found that useful and that you can use those sort of effects in your next GarageBand project.